Our scripture today is from 1 Kings 19, verse 9 through 19. At that place he came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with your sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there is a great wind so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, there was a fire, and the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, the Lord came in the sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? The word of God for the people of God, and all God's people did say. Amen. Save money, live better. Obey your thirst. I'm loving it. Just do it. Have it your way. It's everywhere you want it to be. Melts in your mouth, not in your hands. The man your man could smell like. You may recognize some of these popular slogans. These and many more are all around us. It's become a part of our everyday life. Whether it's on the radio, the TV, can't even watch a YouTube video without them trying to sell you OxyClean. All these things are trying to grab our attention, and whether we like it or not, they are very successful at doing so. But the poet John Sciardi said, we are what we do with our attention. Our attention is very important. What has our attention can come to define us. At first, Elijah's attention is on his loneliness and fear. He says, I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Elijah's journey to the cave started when he was in a contest with the prophets of Baal. They both had sacrificial altars, and they were praying to their own God to light them. The prophets of Baal did not, and Yahweh, the God of Elijah, did, which led him to then go down to the river and kill all the prophets of Baal. Now Queen Jezebel was out to kill him, where he met and heard God. God redirects Elijah's attention to God's very presence. In this part of the story, it says, A great and powerful wind tore the mountains and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After wind, there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. And when Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Silence can really grab someone's attention. Have you ever been in a room where everyone just stops making noise? Sometimes basketball fans, they'll try to distract a free throw shooter. And they'll be making a bunch of noise, waving their arms around, screaming, right before the shot. It grabs your attention. And that's what happened with Elijah. In that silence, that's when Elijah could actually hear God's question. What are you doing here, Elijah? And this isn't just any question. This is a question of the soul. A question that defines who we are. We are what we pay attention to. And if we pay attention to this question, it will make us who we are. This isn't an easy question to answer. In fact, I've wrestled with the question myself. A few months ago, I was going through a tough time in my life where uh, high stress in my household, uh, my senior year of baseball was in question, which was a big deal personally. And it's just something I'd never been through before. And I had no clue what I was going to do with my life at that point. I was really struggling. And I found myself thinking to myself, what am I doing here? Well, I was able to keep playing baseball, and the family got better. But that's not the important part. The important part was that the question came before me, and it sticks with me. Questions of the soul define who you are as a person. Elijah was asked by God, what are you doing here? This gave Elijah something 
to always ask himself as a prophet of God. The answer won't always come in the form of earthquakes, fire, and wind, but the journey that you take in pursuing the answer is the, to the question is what really matters. While this question isn't easy to answer, we can gain some guidance of how Jesus answered this question. He explained what he was doing here on earth in Luke 4.18. The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. What are you doing here? This is a question that God asks every person, a question of the soul, and it's a question that defines us. God asked Elijah, and he asked us, what are you doing here? Taking some silent time to wrestle with that question will make you who you are. So in this silent moment, can you hear the question arrive again? What are we doing here? Thank you.